So we're going to take our sheet of paper, and just as we did with the perpetual ball bounce, we had a path of action that was straight up and down. We folded the sheet of paper. We're going to do the same thing with this one here, where we're going to fold our sheet of paper, lining up your peg holes, and giving it a crease at the very top up here. And this will give us our exact center point. So we're going to mark our fulcrum point up here, the center. And that's because the assignment's going to be symmetrical. On one side, this pendulum swing is going to come up like this on the one side, and it's going to reverse and come back down on this side here. We're just going to then take those drawings that we did on this side here and flip them over and trace them off on the opposite side so that we have the exact same path of action taking place on both sides. So we're only doing one half of the assignment rather than trying to figure out what's going symmetrically. We'll just trace it and flip it. So with our pendulum line coming down like this, ball on the end, about the size of a nickel or a dime or a penny, give it a little <coughs> bit of weight. And as the pendulum swings across this way, if we were to keep the line straight, the distance on here, if we measure it with our pencil, we swing it out and across like this, it's going to end up at this point right here. But we don't want our pendulum to be swinging in a straight line with a taunt like that. We're going to put a bit of a curvature on it. So we're going to curve this line here, which will cause it to be a little bit shorter, which means that the ball would be up here a little bit higher. And then the same thing is true on this side here. We're going to have our pendulum line curving over here. Which is going to shorten the distance on that one side as well. But then what's going to happen is the, the pendulum is going to reverse its direction, but the ball will be up higher up here. The curvature on the line will come in this direction down like this. So it's important to note that we're not taking that, that center line that we drew, the straight line across here, and using it as the halfway point between the two, because what some people will do is they'll actually draw the line coming across this way in the exact opposite position and have the balls just slightly above here. It's actually moving up higher in this direction here, so the crisscross point is on an angle. But again, as I mentioned earlier in the opening discussion, the idea here is that we're, we're doing sort of a, the traditional pendulum swing, which is a formula that is similar to the arm swing to create the overlapping action. It's not a true pendulum swing in the sense of, you know, the way pendulums actually work, um, like you saw in the demonstration that I did before. So you can modify this any way you want. I mean, the height that this is going to is completely up to you. I mean, I'm just saying put it up at this height here because that's the height that I usually do it whenever I'm doing the demo. But that doesn't mean that you can't have your highest point over here, you know, below the fulcrum point, or that you could have it even higher than this. It just depends on how much of a swing you're doing. So it's, it's up to you to decide what your character, in this case the pendulum swing, is going to be doing. All right, so we're going to have this part swinging out here. This is going to be our high point, so our path of action along this line here is going to create an arc. It's going to swing up like that. And what's going to happen is this is going to be the fastest point in here that the pendulum is moving the quickest part at the bottom. And then it's going to ease into its high point up here. So just like the perpetual ball bounce or the descending energy ball bounce, when we had the arc and it came across like this and we had the, the key high point there going from this point here, we did the halfway, the quarter, the eighth, the sixteenth, we slowed into the high point. Same thing was true with the, pen, the perpetual ball bounce. We had our low point and our high point. We did the halfway, the quarter, the eighth, and the sixteenth, slowing into the high. So we're going to do the same thing here, moving fast here, and then it's going to ease up into its high position here, come to a stop, and then reverse and speed up coming back down again. So from this key point here, along our path of action, we're going to find the halfway point right there. That'll be our first primary in between, or our major breakdown. Then what we're going to do is we're going to continue to subdivide this, but we're going to divide it into quarters on both sides here and here because the distance between this point here and this point here that's a pretty big distance to travel and so with just a simple line like this in this little circle if we kept it at that distance that part there would move incredibly fast 
well, it would move that distance in a twelfth of a second, which we don't necessarily want it to move quite that fast, so we're going to slow it down. But we'll talk about the overall timing in just a second. So we've got a key position here, we've got an in-between, major breakdown is right here at the halfway point, then another quarter here. So right now, as it stands, our timing is all evenly spaced. So if we kept it to this, this would look very mechanical. But what we want to do is we want to have it easing into the high point. So we're going to select the halfway point between here and here. And just coincidentally, on purpose, the one-eighth point between these two points here is exactly where my pendulum is sitting in this arc position right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put another in between between these two points here and another in between in there. So we're doing a nice slow in up to that high point. So now let's count off the number of frames that we've got. Number of drawings first. We have one drawing here, then two. I'm just going to write the numbers down here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is our high point. So if we now shoot this on twos, we end up with two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen frames. So there are 24 frames in a second. 16 frames is two-thirds of a second. Right? So that means that if we do this on the opposite side as well, when it's going up on this side, the total number of frames on both sides is now 32, which is a second and a quarter. Okay? So one second and one quarter for it to reach either side. Then we've got to do the reversal and have it come back down. So essentially we're going to use the exact same timing on the way back down again. So that means that if we multiply that all together, we've basically got four of these, one up, one down on this side, one up, one down on this side over here. That works out to two and a half seconds for a complete swing from one side to the other side and back again. Okay, Two and a half seconds overall, right? which is a comfortable amount of time. So let's say you wanted this to move slower. What you would then do is you would drop in some more in-betweens, probably another in-between up here, possibly an in-between here, here, and here as well. But the problem with doing it here, here, and here evenly means that you're actually adding in two, four, six frames, which is one quarter of a second, okay? which is a substantial amount if you put it on each side, both up and down, that's half a second, up and down, that's a full second that you're adding into it. So what was two and a half seconds is now three and a half seconds. One complete second slower, which is a lot. Okay. So you want to be careful when you start adding in frames, you don't add in too many frames. By putting one up here, it increases the amount of time by two, four, six, eight. That's one third of a second. Okay. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that, I mean, you've got lots of options here. When you bring it up on this side here, you could have it ease in here, but then speed up faster on the way down. So you could have that one in between in there, but then take it out on the way back down again to make it go faster. Okay? It just depends on how you want it to move, but that's playing with your timing. So if we break down our, our overall action like that, we've got this number of frames, this number of, of drawings in here, we can start to plot out our timing for this whole thing. So if we keep exactly the same on the way up as we have on the way down, we'll have drawing number eight will be our key position in the high point over here. Then as we come back down again, we're not going to have the exact same drawings because these ones are going to be doing reversals, but then it's going to swing back down in the opposite direction. That means that the new drawings on the way back down will be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. I got to sneeze. Excuse me. I'll edit that out later. <laughs> So 14 down to 15 will be the opposite of number 1. Okay. So then continuing up on this side and looping back down. That means that the total number of drawings that we're going to have overall is going to be 30. Well, actually, it'll be 29 because number 1 will loop back into itself. Right? So we can now take this and we can start to block out our main keys. So we're going to start with drawing number 1. Which is going to be our first key position. And so we're going to find that fulcrum point up here. And we'll draw the arc. A line like that. And then we're going to draw our ball on here. Okay. 
Now I mentioned to you before the idea that when we were drawing the perpetual ball bounce and the descending energy ball bounce, the idea of starting to get into a little bit of line quality, you can add weight to this pendulum by making this bottom line here a little bit heavier and thinner up at the top. Okay, that line quality will add a sense of weight to it and make it pull down harder. Okay, so this is going to be our first key position over here. Then we're going to go to our second key position, which is going to be drawing number eight at the high point. And this is where we reverse the curve on it. So our curve is now going in this direction here. So we find our fulcrum point. Now, to be absolutely accurate with it, I mean, we can sort of rough it out very, very lightly like this. What we can do is we can take our sheet of paper and flip it over this way so the fulcrum point lines up with the ball and the end point of the fulcrum on the other one ends up being where the ball is going to connect. You can get your length to be about the same. Okay, we don't want our string shrinking and growing so we want to try and maintain the overall length as best we can. Same thing is true when you're drawing your ball on there. You want to just take and shift and trace it. That way you can get nice and accurate. And later on, if you want to, I mean, you're just sort of loosely roughing it out like this. If I could just keep that line like that, nice and light and loose, and then go back in later on with an ellipse template, or actually take out a penny and trace it off just to make it a nice firm line okay? when you clean it up. I'll leave it up to you, whichever way you want to do it. There's something nice about, you know, being able to do your own line, and eventually you will get to the point where you're going to have to do that. You can't use a template for a cartoon character later on. So we're going to have to get used to the idea of drawing freehand. So again, add the weight to the bottom part of the line just to make it heavier. So now we're going to draw our timing chart on here based on what we drew on our path of action. Timing chart on the side goes up to here. This is number eight is our key position. So we've got a halfway position, which is drawing number three. We got a quarter down here, two, an eighth, and then we start slowing in. Five, six, and seven. Okay, you can do the little arc on the side here to clarify what's a half it's for yourself if you want to. So our next major drawing that we're going to do is not necessarily going to be number three. We could go in and do number five based on our path of action that we have here. We know that this is going to be a reversal in this direction. It would probably be easier to draw this one in because we know exactly where it is as opposed to number three because the curvature on this line here is going to match up with the curvature on this one here. So we can go in and do our number five drawing. Again, finding your fulcrum point, and I want you to maintain that point. Don't let it jiggle around and swing or move anywhere. Make sure that it's always in that point. Again, I mentioned this to you before, but the idea behind the disc being round like this is so that you can swivel it. I'm drawing like this just so I don't you know, get into the, the field of vision here too much. It's awkward drawing this way, because I have to use my entire arm to draw it that way. What would be easier would be to swing my disc around like this and just be able to pivot my arm on my knuckle. Usually I, I place this knuckle right here on the sheet of paper. And I'm not, I'm not going to dictate to you how you hold your pencil. I mean, I'm just sort of glancing out at the class right now, and I can see there's a lot of different ways that people hold their pencil. 